Hi, I'm Jody and we have a party. I don't know how we should party. <laughs> Maybe. This is the last part of LPIC 101 exam. You know, if you want to get the LPIC 1, if you want to pass it, you have to pass two exams. 101 and 102. We are finishing this one. If you feel that I've watched a lot, I've learned a lot, this is good. But don't be afraid that you are in the middle of the way. You are not. This part is much, much more difficult. This is more straight forward. So be brave and go for the last part of the first exam of your first LPIC certificate. Even if you don't want to get the certificate, I don't have a certificate. Yes. Born with a certificate? No, I raised with a certificate. I raised over. Ah, I, I was a professional Linux admin when certificates started to certify people. <laughs> Be old. Anyway, uh, in this section, we are talking about find system files and place files in the correct location. You should know about FHS, file system hierarchy standard, and few other things. But let's talk about FHS. I'm sure I have covered this already in other sections, but I will repeat because this is super important in my opinion. The first time I felt that I know Linux, I still believe that I don't know Linux. Linux is super huge. If you are speaking about GNU Linux, it's super, super, super huge. Nobody knows it. But the first time I found my way inside it, when I understood this. This is an S standard which says which files goes where. File system hierarchy standard. If you are creating a Unix machine or a Linux machine or compatible machine, you use the same idea, which is super cool. Why this is important? Because it tells you where the important files are. This is the root directory. We start from here. Then we have a bin directory there, which essential command binaries are there. So if I do a ls bin, you will see that, for example, grep might be here. Grep is not here. Grep is super important. You can say, where is grep? It says, okay, user bin grep. Okay, we will see this. But things like... Uh, what is famous here? There are lots of SCP, screen, head, tail, G unzip. These kind of stuff are here. RM, RM dial, R grep, and others. They are here. Essential command binaries. Slash boot contains static files for bootloader. Slash dev contains your device file. We've already seen most of these things. This is a good point in learning. When you see that, okay, I've seen this. I've seen this. I've seen this. Instead of, you are going to learn this in future. ETC is very important. Host specific system configuration files. This is why I am telling you that when I learned about FHS, I felt that, okay, it's easy. Because if... Someone told me, we have an Apache web server and you need to change its configuration to blah, blah. I didn't know what is Apache, but I knew that configurations are in ETC. So I would go to ETC, will check if I have an Apache directory here, or if I have an Apache configuration file here, or if I have a HTTP configuration file here, and I would find my way around. It. When I open the configuration, it has lots of commands and you knew what to do. So etc is the most important when doing this. All the main configurations are here. Lib, essential shared libraries and kernel modules. Media and mount, media for mounting, removable media. MNT or mount is for mount point for mounting file systems temporary when you are doing it manually. OPT is a directory that on our, on our Desktops are empty most of the file, most of the time. But this is for 
add-on application software packages. If you are installing a Linux to do some specific task, they say a scientific calculation, forwarding SMSs, doing this, doing that, most probably that software will install itself in OPT. Even you may have slash OPT, for example, blah, blah, software, etc. So the configurations of this software will go here. Then you have SPIN, essential system binaries, more important than the bin, LS SPIN. You can see, for example, FS checks are here. Your uh, F disk is here, LVM is here, and other important things like XFS tools and these kind of stuff. SPIN. SRV is a server. In the old days, data for service provided by this system. If you were giving some service, the data would go here. Temp is a temporary file that people use, different services use. It's a slash temp. A slash user is secondary hierarchy. It's an interesting one. Normally, we had one root, and inside of that, we had bin, we had lib, and other stuff. But then we have one user, I call it user, slash bin, slash lib, same things can go inside the user as a secondary location. Why is that? For example, grep, as you saw, is here. Slash user bin grep, because there might be a newer version and it goes here. So it's like a secondary more priority when running things. People can have some more updated things rather than in slash bin. Uh, user. And most of the files here are static, are not writable. Slash var is for writable data. So we have one slash var, and inside that we have logs. Each program will create its own log or var database data, var different caches. You can check what we have here. We have cache data, our backups, our logs, our mails, if something is going out, if something being printed, our web server, our temporary, our logs. It's very common to go var log and do a lsltrh, showing the recent files below others. So if you're doing something and you want to see if it creates any logs, one place to check is here, the last files in this var log. Home, home of the users, lib is duplicated. Root for the root user's home. It's different than normal home because you may want to mount it differently. But how a Linux system knows what to run? Say I run ping 442, very speed. I have lots of files here. How my shell knows which ping it should run? It comes from a variable which is called path. You can echo it like this with a dollar sign in front. I do an echo path and it tells me that this is your path. One directory separated by this, next directory separated, next one separated, next one separated. Lots of directories separated by a colon if I call it correct. So whenever you run something, for example, ping, your shell will check this. If there is a ping here, it runs it. If not, it checks this. If not, it checks this. If not this, if not this, 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 this. And if it's not here, it will give you an error that I don't know what is blah, blah. Come and not found because it was not here, was not here, was not here. This is how path works. We will see scripting and uh, these variables, environment variables later in later sessions. But for now, just know about path. You can check it like this. If you want to add something to it, you can say export new path equals old path. This is the name, but this is the value. And home Jody W. Now, if I put something inside W, it will be checked too, because my path contains this. Cool. 
if I want to check what ping I am running, I can say which ping, which ping is being run. User bin ping, practically which goes and checks this and sees if there is a ping here. No, checks this, checks this. Ah, oh, user, ah, oh, no, not nothing in S bin. Then in the bin there is a ping. It says okay, this is the ping you are running because you may have different pings in different directories. You can say show all. It says okay, you have two pings. One is user bin ping, another one is bin ping. Even sometimes these are different. But I'm running this because this is first comes in my path. I can also say where is ping. It will show me the ping and its man page. Some more files about ping. I can also say what is ping. It says ping is a send ICMP echo request. This comes from man page. The man of the ping, this is the man page of the ping. If you say what is ping, it will go check man page and will show you only this. So we learned about which and varies, right? This showed me the executable and the man page, some more info, which showed me which ping is being run, which dash A showed me all available pings in the path. But the first one will be run. If I do a which CD tells me, okay, there is no CD, but I have CD. What is it? You can check with type. When you say type, of the CD, it says, hmm, not sure what was the explosion, but we will continue to learn. When I say type CD, it says CD is a shell building. Shell is this environment where I'm giving commands, getting answers, this black screen. You can configure yours in a non black mode. <coughs> Not sure what happened, maybe it's related to the explosion. <coughs> no, it's just not just joking, but I'm dying. Type CD it says CD is a shell building. My shell, which is called bash at the moment, you have other shells too. We will speak about this in the next sessions, but Shell is where you type your commands, see the result, and this kind of stuff. So CD is part of my shell. But if I say ping, it says ping is an executable. Type blah, blah, not fun. So you know also about the type. <clears throat> and the last thing is when you want to search for a command. It says you should know about find. We've already covered find in depth in other sessions. So I just say that it's good to know two new switches. On the previous session, you saw about the users and groups. So on the find, you can search for one specific user or group. Say, give me all the files where user is Jadi. You can say, not user is Jadi. Or you can say, no user Jadi, whatever you want. Just to talk about find. User group max depth tells find how deep it should go into directories. Only go only one level. Don't go deeper. <coughs> but something which is super cool is locate and update. Say we want to find all the files which has VMware in them. Normally we go here or we say find in the root where name is VMware. VMber. <clears throat> I say I, so it's case insensitive. I'm searching for the name, whatever, VMware, whatever. I quote them so bash doesn't expand this. We'll search for exactly this. Bash won't interpret these signs. Okay? So I will do a search and we'll find all the VMware. Permission denied because there are lots of root access needed. 
I will do a search with root access. It says, okay, these are the files. Even here, you can see that it's printing one by one. This is a slow. In the old times, this was considered super bad to run something like this because it goes through all the file system, checks everything for this pattern one by one, and it's too much pressure on the especially hard disk. Nowadays, okay, I have a super fast computer, super fast hard disk. This is not a big deal. But still, it might be slow if you have lots of files. To solve this, we have a command which is called locate. Give me everything which has VMware in it. You saw it was super fast, instant answer. Technically, it doesn't search. It knows everything. How? It has a command which is called update db. You have to run it with root. Whenever you run this, it goes through all the file systems, sees all the files, save their name and location in a database. And later, when you do a locate, and you say locate Jadi, it says, okay, these are the files with the Jadi in them. This is cool. Very. But it's searching my home, not very interesting. Anyway, so this is how update DB and locate works. Two points. First, you saw that we have to run update DB. So this is not live. If I just add a new file, it won't be in the results. You have to run this first. Second, this is being run using a system which is called Chrome tabs or Chrome files. We will see this later. This system can run things on specific times. This is being run every 24 hours. Once a day, this is being run. So you can always use locate to find general files, not the latest files. But most of the times we are looking for things like, for example, network configuration. So we do a locate networking and it gives, okay, these are the files with the networking in their name. You may need it. This is super fun and super fast. I use it a lot. Sometimes this is not part of the distros. On Debian's, the package is called plocate. And this is the configuration file. Or maybe this. Depends on different systems. <coughs> chat etc we know it's in etc so we just try update and there is an update db conf this is the configuration it says prune paths don't check these so why it checked my jody i don't know maybe because i was jody i don't know and some configurations just know the file name for l that's it that's all now you can say I know LPIC1101 and you can party, dance, whatever. I'm going to travel. We'll go to Vietnam for a cycling trip. It will be long. When I'm back, we will continue with 102, which is much, much, much easier. At least more straightforward and more fun than how the system boots, how to do FDisk. I don't like to. I prefer these things. Have fun.